recess, so we can call the meeting to order at five o'clock. And can we just wait till five o one so we're continuing to be late all the time? No. <laughs> See, we can maybe we can even get done early. That would be crazy, unprecedented. Mm -hmm. but, uh, are there any uh, revisions to the agenda? Uh, I wonder if we could add a, a little talk about I just don't There's see There's Act 46 update, so. Oh, could we do it there? Okay. Or we can do it under 2.1, which is the reorganization. No, you were talking about the, re the district organization. The district organization. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Okay. 2.3. Right. Gotcha. So I add to that? Sure. And I'd like to add on an uh, executive committee, uh, an exec executive session for personnel issue. Okay. Just brief. It would be very brief. I think for 2.5 that we're, are we planning to go into executive right. for that? No. Yeah. What are we going to do for that? I'm doing one for... for oh, okay, so we can do it at the same time. What we're supposed to do, I guess, I guess we're supposed to if do... If it's separate. for different people, you'll have to have them separate. Okay. okay. So, anyway, we, will, we can do that time. Okay, any other revisions? <coughs> uh, public comments and correspondence. Any executive committee comments? No. Is there a mission a motion to approve the minutes of February thirteenth? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes of February thirteenth, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. Dorothy abstains. Okay, uh, 2.1, the supervisory meeting for the reorganization, which will happen, will next, happen next week. Next week. Right. Okay, so that's just on here. That's on here, so usually the executive committee goes with this, what we said, Slater recommendations for oh, chair, right. for that's chair right. clerk. That's right, so yeah. we did do that last year. Yep. Um, does the committee want to propose a slate? For the board to consider? We've done in week. the past. No reason not to no. continue. Okay. I think. I'm in favor of that. Does anybody care to nominate uh, people for <coughs> chair, vice chair, and clerk? Or I, a slate? I would say that, you know, let's have the same slate from that, unless, <laughs> unless someone. Who's you and who's vice? Can you vice? I'm vice. I'm planning on moving this summer, so. <coughs> As I've sent to the E32 board, like out of, uh, out of the district, out of out of uh, East Montpelier and into Calus. Oh, okay. <coughs> well, that's an, uh, um, well. So I guess that would affect we, the representation on the. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, so I guess I'm not sure exactly if um, how the E32 board is what they're going to do. If they're going to appoint me to the as a voting member, if they're going to appoint me to the executive committee. I I think would. If you're moving, you're representing Cal's, then it, so it would be, I think uh, you I, would lose your seat as a you, East Montpelier rep. I mean, correct. That's my And So I think you would lose your yeah. membership on the board, yeah. unless you have it for a different reason. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Should we do 2.1 first? I mean, like Matthew for chair? Well, you know, or do you do it as a slate? Or? I think it's to, this sort of slate. Is okay. anybody else okay. interested in being vice chair? I mean, it, it, well, I, I would say you should do it, and then can resign and can pick someone else. I'm and maybe move. Actually, maybe move by the time. Right. That's what I've been I saying. I think it will be moved, actually, um, unless something happens. Yeah. We'll just I don't think anything brief. more can happen before July 1st. I'm quite I'm open. I mean, it's... It, OK, so I'm going to move that we keep carrying. And, and you're open to, to continuing? Serve. I'm open to do it, yeah. But I mean, if people can nominate others as well, mm -hmm. obviously, okay. here or at the meeting next week. So. Yeah, I'm willing to do and it. And who's our clerk? I think Chris Winters was our clerk. No? Is it Chris Winters? Was I? I? You were the clerk. Yeah. I was clerk for some time. I haven't gotten my stipend oh. this year. <laughs> <laughs> I had a stipend. I had a stipend. Yeah, that's. Okay. okay. I'd have to look, but I thought okay. it was Chris, but. 
or Christmas. Okay, I thought, Chris, you had one of the positions. Yeah, I didn't okay. draw them up. That's what I thought. Oh. Yeah. And then the treasurer's mirror on speed. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would love to have a motion to um, recommend a slate of nominations to the SU board mm -hmm. uh, of myself for chair, Kari for vice chair, and Chris McVeigh for, for clerk. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, oh, sorry, Bill. Dot was a clerk. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. I went back. No discussion quickly jumped on that. <laughs> Make sure. Just try this. Just try this. <laughs> you go with this one. Sorry, Chris. I thought for sure you had it. I guess it didn't come over. How many times did you say my memory ain't so bad? You're the most. You want to you want to arm wrestle over it or no? I will flip a two headed coin and Doc can have the heads. How many of the school the local boards have actually elected officers yet? And the new is this going to flip around or? There are two. Oh, there are uh, two boards: Washington no. High, U32, and Cal's that need to reorganize. Okay. What about Berlin? Uh, Berlin will not reorganize until April 24th. Right. right, right, right. Okay. They won't um, even organize until April. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, it is a good point. That, right. Yeah, whoever it, it has to be a voting member of the SU board, right? You know, in order to serve. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? This motion carries. Uh, 2.2, the 2019-20 school year calendar. So you'll see in here, I wanted to present this to you, and I look, in some years the executive committee has approved this, some years it's been the SU board. Um, really trying to get any, without snow days, have any student days past the second week in June. Therefore, there's some changes that haven't been there and that, that we've moved into the past that we're taking and worked with the associations and with the leadership team. You'll see that Columbus Day on the 14th is now a student day. If we had kept our similar pattern, we would have been two days into the third week without snow days, which I don't think is going to help us much. And then on June, uh, uh, sorry, on in January, you will see that the 21st, we usually had Martin Luther King totally off, and one of the things the Teachers Association recommended was that we have a day, we have half day grading there, and we have a half day on diversity and implicit bias training, something along the lines of what Martin Luther King uh, strive for, and that we have school on the 21st. We're really trying to get, and so graduation would be, for U32, would be on the 12th that Friday the 12th, but really getting things sewn up with any snow days going into the third week. So, so, they re so this has five snow days built in, right? No, it doesn't. Oh, it's it's not, not built in. That's what people uh, like to say. They are not built in. Not built in. Okay. They're not built in. Okay. They're, because this school district has a contractual agreement with the association that we have 180 days, right. which is five days past okay. the statutory right. right. So at least snow days would be from Monday the 15th, if you'd say five to right. the 19th. And how many have we had this year? I guess plus counting the days off of the water main break. There were six here at U32, and we were capturing one by moving in service in April to the end of the year. Right. And so they have five, <clears throat> so currently they're going into the last Monday in June right now. Mm. And it could have been worse. I mean, I felt like those five came early <laughs> on. I've been... Yeah, we used a lot of late arrivals. Yeah, kind of push that. Which that I hear plenty of, like, please don't do this to us as parents, from parents. Mm -hmm. You know, don't do not do late arrivals because it makes it really hard on us. So they'd rather go for two weeks in June? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that. Well, they, they, they the gamut. Might, yeah, that might yeah, be I true. The, I can hear the gamut from yeah. people telling me oh, to yeah, have I'm less sure. days. That people tell me have more. I hear all you can't sorts of. Everyone. It's not. It's not. That it isn't a winnable. It's just. It is what it is. 
So basically, the board will just adopt this next week, is there, or at least consider it's it? It's up to you if you, like I said, it's been done by the executive committee, it's been done oh, by the SU board. I see. It's up to you which way, but I'd like to have a board adopt this calendar. Um, my suggestion is we do it, and we don't have to come talk about it next week. We, we can't I, change anything. They can't change anything. I'm fine with it, and I think that's probably what would happen. I, I just, the only reason I hesitate is because before I became yeah, chair, we there was kind of a lot of discussion about whether the SE board should be, you know, taking a lot of decisions that the executive committee had been. And yeah. I, don't, I don't really know where to draw the line. I think there's that. value in the full board approving this Me because too. then if they get pushback from the community, then you know, have to stand by it. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. And then. So I'm, sure, can, I'm sure it won't be changed. Yeah, we can recommend it yeah. Yeah. as an executive yeah, right. committee. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll move to recommend this as a draft two. Second. Any further discussion? You know, is there an optimal calendar yes. that is not this? Yes. And what, what is that? Because we might have to change all of it. We'd have to change all of the schools in central Vermont to, because we have, remember, we have to be in alignment yep. with the tech center. Right. Um, we are not doing what is best for learning. We're doing what is the tradition of learning for years in Vermont. So is there something that we, how would, how would that process start? If we're going to... I think it would be harder than what we try to do with doing the school with, start time. With the sleep study? Yeah. Can, can you just give us a flavor of what... You would have probably four weeks on with two weeks off. Chittenden County tried to do it several years ago. You'd, uh, not four weeks, sorry. You'd have eight weeks on, four, two weeks off, Eight weeks on, where there can be oh. interventions for kids and professional development oh. during that time, yeah. and you can really start to catch kids. There are other states that have moved to that mm -hmm. and have seen improved. And then it's not the only thing that can say you can't say it's a t direct correlation. Um, if we look at what's done internationally on 200-day calendars, which is where we really should be in, in terms of 200 student days, 200 right? student days, it's not increasing the amount of learning. It's having 200 days for learning, so you can really get into deeper into things and. Mm -hmm you can actually give kids more time during the day. Um, you know, you would have, that's the schedule they go with longer chunks. I think it's 10 weeks on, two weeks off, and there's a six week break in the, in where the summer. summertime yeah. is, depending if you're in the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere of the world. Um, so we're really, we're, we're putting, in the US, we put our kids behind by saying there's 175 to 180 days. We're putting ourselves already behind the eight ball with our, and we're, our kids, are competing internationally for jobs. That's the, the kids right here are competing internationally because of the access to around the world that there is. So, in terms of, let's see. So, basically, the summer, if we could try and do that, the summer would be go from. Basically, July. Ten, it'd be, well, it'd be when more you, than that, July and half of August. It, July and half of August. If it's six it would weeks. Be one, you know, one in June. But right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to talk about community facilities and air yep. conditioning and things like that. And it'd be a it'd be a major major lift. Okay. It'd probably be one of the hardest things that you could attempt to do, politically and budgetarily. I mean, just based on the school start time committee, you know, process and how challenging that was, even to yeah. So. Uh, any further discussion on this motion? Did somebody second it? I'm sorry. Uh, Kari, Kari seconded it. I thought I seconded it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Chris seconded it. Okay. Chris seconded it, yeah, sorry. Uh, all those in favor of recommending the calendar as drafted to the SU board for adoption, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thanks. So, uh, 2.3, Act 46 update. So um, I would give you this piece of it right now that, and I'm sorry you don't have a written report. Um, I'm hopeful that I'll have something next week for the SU board. Um, because we're in the two-track mode that we're in right now, um, Lori has been doing a great job of trying to get all the fiscal and human resources points aligned. Um, we've been able to start, uh, we're registered as an organization with the federal government, with, um, we have our tax ID with the tax system. When I said federal government, it's department, the Department of Education at the federal level, um, with state labor, with Secretary of State's office, 
and um, what else am I? Was the regular federal? Regular federal. The things you would need in order to pay employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all that said, we have to start spinning up the software for a single organization, and now we're going to start. Besides the legal costs, this is where we're going to start incurring other costs. Um, it could be up to ten thousand dollars to create a single entity in Emory. Uh, we have to start now. We don't have a choice, or we will not be ready for operation on July one. Um, so no matter where it goes, I gave Lori and I, I sent the memo, Lori wrote it, but um, to Nemric to start the process to start a single entity construction in our accounting system. Um, so we'll be receiving those bills. Um, we're also, I mean, we have a project plan that's pretty extensive, but some of it is 15 minute tasks just so we don't drop anything. We think it's pretty comprehensive, it's been crossed over by uh, four or five districts that have already merged, um, and we also have, and I'm more willing to share that plan, but when you look at it, you say, wait a minute, this looks like unbelievable amount of work. I'll give you an example on there, change the letterhead. Well, it's a Word document, go in there, change the name, and you're done. So it's just that we don't want to miss anything we don't think of, and we're actually working <coughs> with our colleagues that are in force merger, so we're all trying to make sure we're not missing a task. Uh, Lori's got a business manager cohort, I've got a superintendent cohort. We're trying to do the least amount possible uh, and say, does it really need to be done by July 1? <coughs> Triage. It, it's really, it's, it, like here's a good example. We have on there change the domain name. Well, we don't need to do that by July 1, so it doesn't have to be July 1. It needs to be done at some point, but it does need to be operational for July so those are, those are the questions. We all, we're asking pretty hard that question every time we have a task. Is this, and we're starting to um, meet with our colleagues at central office. And I don't think it's going to be much that really affects the schools themselves um, that we need to have them. And we've had a conversation with the principals a couple of times. They have pretty much time if they don't see anything that is really heavy that's going to hit them. But it's really the business and operations piece. Do you need a kind of um, a statement by the executive committee or by the SE board to allocate resources for some of this stuff? Or sort of where is that? Set? So we're, you know, that's part of what's in the district organizational meeting to be able to take out money in lieu, right. in lieu of. Um, we're in a gray area right now <laughs> of whether you're allowed, we're allowed to use SU resources for doing this work or not. You appointed as a board resources for legal funds for doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a good answer either way. It's uh, right. um, you know the way the agency has set it up is that you set up a fund that's um, where you collect where the bills are. You pay you you take out a loan to pay in lieu of it, and then the organization the new organization pays for it on the other side. Mm -hmm. We also know that some of those voluntary mergers, some of that was paid for. From the previous organizations, mm -hmm. um, from talking to colleagues, so you know we're kind of in that. It's a gray area. That's the best way I can give it to you. I think any time the board uh, ratifies work like that, it's a good thing to do, just for the board to say, "Yes, we're, we're in support of doing this," mm -hmm. and it helps us with the auditors and you know, the, we have the board approval. I didn't bring you any motions like that tonight, but. This was literally a meeting we had Monday night, or Monday day, where we were going down through the task list. And we course. could expect I that. said, Lori, I was like, mm -hmm. where, where are we for timeline? She's like, I need to start this now. Mm -hmm. I just don't have any more time to wait. And I've been trying to wait, but we've got to be ready to be operational July 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm a little torn on whether to ask this question or sort of raise this, this topic, but... Um, the, I guess the question I want to ask is if there's a sense on the part of anyone on the executive committee of, you know, sort of what people will advocate for doing at the, at the organizational meeting on the 8th. Mm -hmm. Like, is, the, is there still a, an organized, concerted strategy to push to adjourn that meeting before business is conducted? Or, you know, do we think that the next meeting will go any differently? previous one did. I guess it, and I'm asking because I don't know, just to know like how to, you know, think through um, 
you know, some of the things that, that Bill and Lori are struggling with, as well as mm -hmm. some of the things that, you know, you might need to end up doing as a board or as a collection of boards with regard to teacher contracts and, you know, other things that I'm sure will come down the line. Um, well, I, I think that there are two separate issues to me. So the one is that I, I think we should make some statement of support of the work that they're doing right now, and then the, we're gonna have very little control. I haven't heard anything, but we would have very little control of what happens at that meeting, regardless of how prepared we are. So I guess it's, are we willing to take the risk, just as we're taking the risk with the contracts, to say, you know, we support, which we should, you know, we support the work that they're doing right now. What happens at that meeting at this point? Even if we hear feedback from anybody right now, we, we really won't have any, any, no, I know. I know. We, yeah, no. I, I guess maybe a better way of you're right. Um, you're right. I guess a better way of saying what I was trying to say is that my preference personally would be that the that the the, the board express some kind of support for a two track process because um, at the moment you know we we are creating challenges in gray areas. Or, or we, we uh, great areas and challenges are being created, um, you know, particularly for our administrators, um, but also for, you know, our teachers and, and others who work for the schools. Um, but I can imagine that a proposal along those lines would be controversial, is my guess. Um, I, it might be at the organizational meeting, but I think we bring it up at, at the full board, board meeting in a week. I mean, because then you'll have at least a, a sense of what the uh, uh, to support in a current organization, right. um, and, you know, and not worry about the organizational meeting, um, because because it sounds like if nothing happens there or if it's adjourned again, <laughs> that the transitional board will uh, somehow have the authority uh, to make decisions, because uh, I, I just do not see a vacuum. Um, because, you know, the way the, the court did not issue an injunction, uh, th this legal process is, is going to happen. Unless something else intervenes in it, what I mean by that is it would have to be an emergency um, either appeal to the Vermont Supreme Court, and I don't know if that is or isn't happening, and then they would have to issue some type of injunction and say stop, or for the uh, Senate, um, you know, and the House get together, and the Senate passes, House get together and, and do that. Um, but either way, taking this preliminary steps to um, ensure that we will not, you know, be too adversely impacted by July first. Um, you know, because it, it won't be a vacuum. I can't, I can't imagine it being a vacuum. Um, you know, say that there's no, uh, you know, that the House and Senate don't get together, and so nothing passes with the governor signing it, uh, and the meeting is adjourned. You know, the transitional board is seated. Um, and I, I, you know, the language is vague enough. There's an opinion on that. I don't know how, how tight it is, Chris, because I don't, I will say, you know, what I thought before was directed from AOE and how the way the Attorney General has written since then yeah. has said, no, those weren't directives, those are now opinions. So I, I understand what you're referencing was a letter that came from the Secretary about a week and a half ago that I sent yeah. out to all of you. but. In there was expressed. This is our opinion as the agency of education. It didn't say that that was a directive. You, so I just don't be, know. A directive is only an opinion too, um, based on we think we have this power to direct you to do this, and and it carries no. I, I think if you if some if it was going to be challenged, you would be going back to the the documents that support you that entity, whoever's giving the directive, mm -hmm. having the authority to, to issue it or provide that opinion, and so uh, you know I, I don't. Directive versus opinion, I think, in this situation is not a, to me, a game changer in terms of whether the authority is there. And, and I think the articles um, are vaguely enough written that, and, and then Kyle brought this up and, and said, okay, who really has the power here? Um, and seeming that the transition board may have some authority along those lines. And again, I just don't see it being a vacuum um, because it just, it says, okay, yeah, we've done all this stuff. and. No one has any authority to do anything to make the school year go forward, and I don't think that any judge would be construing it that way and just say, oh, sorry, there's a big hole here, so these kids aren't going to be in school next year. I just, I don't envision that. Yeah, 
I, I apologize. I, I must have missed this part of the letter, but was there a piece of it that said, well, like, because my impression was that the transition board really has no power at all. If you look at the articles, it's a little vague in terms of saying it, can, it has the power to do what <coughs> Boards do, I think, is how I'm recalling it. There's a phrase it's, in there. Yeah, that. and so it's that's what I'm talking about. That it's that's and that I mean Kyle Lenz brought this up months ago, saying when it, when they first came out because it was, you know, not well crafted in terms of delineating what authority the different boards had at what times. Um, so, but if it's not crystal clear, how much risk are we willing to take? Why not advocate? as a school board who, who understands better what, what the risks are, what, what the implications of not pursuing the, the dual track um, approach are. You know, I think that's, you know, I think that was pretty clear in the meeting is that people weren't necessarily, in the organizational meeting, they weren't necessarily thinking about what the implications were for students or the system. Um, they're just, you know, expressing their dissatisfaction with, with what's been placed before us. So I, I, I feel a responsibility to communicate Listen, if we don't go this route, it, it may work out, but it may not. And, and here's what it means uh, or could mean. If, if, but the route you're talking about is just doing the authorization to move forward on this. Yeah, yeah. parallel track. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, my, my concern, just to be, you know, for the sake of stating it, is that, you know, when I saw the I read in the paper the Secretary of Education sort of talking about using all legal means to, you know, ensure that the law is carried out. My, my interpretation of that, or my sense of it, was a, a threat of, like, taking over the school districts, yeah. essentially. And, I could see that. Uh, and I, I don't that know. Peril. Mm -hmm. Will they, will they, yeah, they're trying to they, they do everything at their peril, but yeah, you know, that doesn't mean, I, but I, I guess, and I guess one question that I had, and I wanted to ask the committee about this, was, um, I don't know the law. I, I imagine that there is something in statute that w permits the state board or the agency to step in if they feel like there is. There is. There is. I don't know what it is. Power to do that. So I what was, would be the process? I'm sorry. What would be the process for that? I don't know, Chris, because I haven't been down through. Okay. What I wanted to suggest was that we ask our attorney mm -hmm. to explain to us what the statute actually says. And under what conditions, um, you know that that actually could be contemplated, and what the process would be. Because I, I don't know, and I don't even know how to like do the research on it. Um, so that was yeah. one thing I wanted to suggest because I'm a little concerned about. You know, I, I I would imagine there are emergency powers that if a school district is completely failing or or something, that the state board can come in and take there over. Has to I mean. Be a I mean, there has. I mean, you've seen that in other states where they take over entire they systems. Take, uh, they take yeah. over Romney in the '70s. Really? Yep. Yep. But Romney was taken over process. for a couple of years. What? Because of the state board. I don't know the reason, Chris. I haven't looked in. I just know that that's the history that happened. I think around '72 and '73. The state itself is yep. opposed to really? over Romney School okay. District. And I imagine there is a process, but I have no idea what it is. So, I guess I would love to have, you know, somebody's legal opinion about sort of what that looks like mm -hmm. um, because it does concern me and I think it's you know and I agree with you Rick that it would be an extraordinary mm -hmm. extraordinary yes. it's not really the word for it, breathtaking it, maybe is the better word extraordinary is, is but I think it's, like, it's kind of like a worst case scenario it feels like to me for everybody for, no I, I, don't I, think, I, I don't think that the secretary in my opinion probably wants to be put in that position mm -hmm. And I don't think we, as board members, want to want to see that happen either. No, you just I, I, um, you give up too much input. Well, we lose that. all democracy. At what? That, we lose all democracy at that point. You know, it, at least temporarily. Yeah, temporarily, right? Yeah, you know, right. that, yeah, that we would not be making decisions in right. schools at that point. Right. So I don't know if it's a real likely it is that that would happen, how challenging it would be for the board or for the secretary no. to make that case. I, I just don't know, but I would like to know. I'd like to know that. Uh, I, I don't think it would be very challenging if there was, you know, no entity that could make decisions for a school district that was, you know, up and, because it's going to come into being and say, yeah, this entity is a legal entity, but there's no mechanism to move it forward or making decisions for it. Um, I, I see that's kind of like 
I that would see that that's not being unusual for the secretary to, if there was no other way of coming in and, and appointing people. It's kind of like emergency powers. And it's kind of like taking over, you know, those, uh, the uh, problem they had up in JP where they, they took over the, the enterprise and they appointed a, a, a trustee or a, um, I don't, there may be another word for them. Um, but a, right idea. Uh, yeah, so some, we're appointing this person to make decisions because this entity is, at a, you know, just rudderless and and, not get, and it has to go forward. And so I, that's that would be the peril of not doing so. And they would get to pick the person. We wouldn't. That's exactly right. <laughs> Which is why, yeah. So there's there's this balance here. But anyway, I. I it would be good to get an opinion and just so people are aware of what the um, emergency powers the secretary has um, in a situation where there is no entity uh, that has been, that is in place to run the organization. So I but on the other issue, I would say we should bring it up next next week at the full board meeting. Yeah, that's, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> um, but I guess I would like to do this by, again, by motion. Okay? Yeah, so, really something motion. like a motion that to direct Bill to ask our attorney for a written opinion about the <laughs> conditions under which the state board or the agency of education can assume control of school districts. I think that, I, would, I, would, I would make that motion. And just, um, so, but in the, in the event that there was no uh, governing entity in place, um, what would say state board, what the state the secretary of education's options, what are their emergency powers uh, to uh, come in, or maybe more specifically, what are their, uh, what are the, uh, in, in statute, what are all possible legal means, you know, give, give the uh, meat to that bare bones assertion. Right. What does that mean? Is it okay for the sake of brevity if we keep the motion to your initial sentence? And you, don't, then you don't want me to ramble? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of the rest of what you said maybe. What I would do is, I mean, the way I interpret, you know, I'll just send me as well. that you have a motion with you know, Yeah, we need a second for that. The motion. Oh, I'll second it. Okay. Can we, did you get the? Well, motion? did you just say to authorize the superintendent to, to see? To direct the superintendent. Okay. Um, to um, seek legal counsel to around. Seek a, to, to ask our attorney for a written legal opinion. About, about conditions about under which the agency of education or state board of education can take control of school districts? I think it would be yeah. the secretary of education. Secretary of education? Um, I don't think it would be. You want, you know, it, it could be the state board. So you, okay, you, you want to ask it the way it under, under what circumstances? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and she and said that. What conditions? What conditions? A, a, another entity could come in and assume control over. I wouldn't say that. I would say just exactly the way it is, knowing the pieces of the statute to take over by the state board okay. or the secretary. Would you want to specify, you know, in the event that there isn't kind of a no vote? You know, so you don't. I don't right. Right. You want, you, what you want is, it, at least let me say how I interpret it first. You want to know all the ways in which that can happen. Yeah. Yeah, you so, do. so you don't want to put any qualifiers on it about like no vote or these other pieces. You want to know the statute. What the statute says. What power does either the state or the secretary have to say? I'm assuming control of a school district. And then you, from there, as a board having that information, can use that to have a decision of well, if we have a no vote, what is, where does that leave us? Because I don't think you're going to get something specific for your current condition. I actually know there isn't. I don't remember any rewriting of the statute when the state board can take control in the past six or seven years. Mm -hmm. So you want to know those conditions, and then yeah, I, I would have to think that the any statutory <coughs> authority like that would not have enumerated and only the enumerated no, would have I, a, a safety valve. It's going to have some vagueness, yeah. as Dorothy was saying, for judgment. Yep. So is there a second for this? Uh, I seconded it. Okay. But I, I do have a concern about it. Is that we're, we're looking or asking for information about the narrow issue of the worst case scenario of the state taking over. But I'm also wanting to know what are the implications of not having a board or a budget in place when the new union commences? 
you know, there are other, there could be other implications um, in terms of contracts and, and you know, just business realities. So I don't know if we need a legal opinion about that, but I think that's in some ways um, very important information for the board and, and by extension the community to understand when we have that organizational meeting. And that, that's a, a, a good point. I mean, I'm less worried about contracts because under the default articles, contracts are respected, so those would be in place. Um, but but how we pay for them? In, yeah, for sure. That's the problem because the you know with the new entity, the the budgets that were um, approved or may be approved for local towns, I don't think they're effective for this new entity um, because. It's a new entity, and then you know, with power to budget, it's its own. Um, and so I, I think that's where a gap comes in, potentially. Especially if you don't have a board. If you don't have a board, that's the bigger problem because the board at least would have the authority to borrow against future budget. Well, that's you want to go reread that opinion from the secretary. I, you know, I saw where they said, but there is no previous budget to. Right. But isn't it, aren't they looking statutorily to the Senate, fill in the Senate has in their current bill a uh, statement. And, that, and that's also my other point is that, you know, a board would, it would be uh, something to say that board, even if you didn't have their previous budget and they weren't able to get a budget in place by July 1st, wouldn't be able to borrow against uh, Based on the cumulative budget right, of the yeah, previous that, edition. That, that was at, yeah, said that, that, that's, that's, that would, that's why the, they said they're looking for the legislature to. to right, solve but, but I mean, even happens. if they didn't fix that, um, I think that there would be the implied authority to do that as a new entity. And you may say, you may look and say, that, well, maybe not, but you know what? I think. At that point, I think it's at the secretary's or the state board's discretion. Because there's, the there's, there's nothing in statute. Well, it wouldn't be at their discretion because they couldn't make up a statute um, and, and or an authority. Because there, there is no statute. Can yeah. we just talk about mechanisms for money? Yeah. How do we receive money for money to pay our expenditures? Who gives us that? The authority? No. Who gives, who gives us the, the money? Literally gives us the money so that we can run the school district. The voters? Mm -hmm. Okay, but no. who, through what, what mechanism? Yeah. They give it to who, and then who gives the, it to us? The uh, voters authorize the school boards to borrow and remove tax collection. Yeah, but no, if you didn't have that. So we're currently, are, we have money coming in from, the top. from somewhere. A supervisor union cannot borrow. Right, school I'm not. The district can. Right. Um, the taxes come in in staggered approaches from August on, but in the absence of a tax rate, that money will not be coming in because... Um, the residents will not get a tax bill. Who do we borrow from? We borrow from a financial institution. Okay, so we based on the collateral. So, Gloria, I don't but think it's I based expected. on the tax. Um, right, but the tax money, the, the tax doesn't come from the town. It comes from where? It comes from a calculation using the town taxes via the state for state aid. Right, but where's the check that literally the money's coming in for state It's technically coming from the towns. Um, then there's a state aid component we get from the state. They, they reconcile it mm -hmm. depending on the property values in the town. And they say most towns don't collect enough in taxes to pay for the education funding. Right. So the state, if you, you know, when they switch this up, they have the towns paying us directly. And so the town of Worcester would write one check to U32 and one check to the Worcester School District. That's how it goes. And but in the absence of taxes, that's the right. problem because you need to have the taxes in running this formula that allows us to borrow. There's still a state aid. We still get about 20% state aid, and that comes in, in in three times a year. So, so if there's no revenue stream, there's nothing for us to borrow against. Right, and you need permission to borrow from, from who? the voters. From and currently, supervisory unions can't borrow, so the new school district would need permission to borrow. Somebody. So is there like a line of credit then with a financial That's institution? That's how it would work. But, but you have to have that authority to go right. do that. Right. Okay. And it's not in current statute. The current statute is written for budgets for current um, school districts, not for ones that had been created. I don't know how to say it a different way. Um, but that's what they're trying to amend so that the new WCU USD could mm. borrow money. It's currently it's set up where um, so then, it, uh, how do I say so it? I, we would have to have a line of credit, which means you lose all the interest income you've been budgeting for. Mm -hmm. 
about three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so, so just a time note that we're we're warned until six, and I believe mm -hmm. the U thirty two board has a meeting in here and starts at six. Yep, we can lock so the door. What's that? We can close the door and lock it. Oh, we, we could do that. Might so, be some legal issues with that as well. But um, and this so, dinner is going on tonight too, so there's some. Okay, so oh, okay, so, I, so at least let's, let's dispose of this motion one way or the other, and then we can turn to your question, which might be a separate motion. I don't know who we ask about that stuff. If it's also the lawyer, it, it, it sounds like we might not need to ask it more. We can we can we actually say stay, say that may, without a board and a budget, maybe this all works out, but maybe it doesn't, and and we don't know exactly if we'll be able to operate a school. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, well, let, let's take that up. So the motion is to is to direct Bill to to get a written opinion from the lawyer about the circumstances or conditions under which the state board or the agency of education can assume control of school districts. Okay, and, uh, and we want to have that by next Thursday, so we can yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Call Chris Leibold tomorrow morning. But, uh, okay. but yeah, I don't know if he'll be able to get to us by then. I don't that's, know. That's the yeah. strong preference. Um, is there any further discussion of that mm -hmm. motion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. So do you want a second motion on this well, topic, or do you feel like it's I, I, I don't know who to ask either. Yeah. I, 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 I sense that there's real concern from our administrators about this question. And, to me, that's enough. That says there's real risk here of not having a board and a budget okay. in place. But you know, the real risk is um, either um, enhanced or not by saying this is how it statutorily works and this is where the authority lines lie. Uh, and if there's not this entity in place that can you know, access the funds, then that becomes more convincing than just saying we think it will be a nightmare. And because you're kind of going with knowing yeah. Um, because yeah. of the certain things that are in place that need to be in place in order to fund a budget. Sure. So I think, uh, you know, maybe getting a, an additional opinion on uh, what is the authority, the borrowing uh, authority, because that, that sounds like if the issue that would come up if we didn't have a budget in place. What are the entities that can borrow to keep the school going and how, how that works and have that explained because you know, just assuming it would be a nightmare without saying, well, how do you know that? And no, I'm this not, is how I'm we know it. anything. But right. I'm just saying there's risk. Right. Like whose opinion would we ask? I think what? you know what? It, it almost sounds like it would be a, another an attorney knowing the financial angle or a business manager knowing the financial okay. aspect of how schools are really funded and where the money comes from and what authorities need to be in place mm -hmm. for an entity to be borrowing against future tax revenues. Um, so just to, to lay that out. <clears throat> So is the question about who who has the authority to to borrow money on behalf of the school district? You know, it, it's the question is that if there was not a board in place on July 1, 2019, and assuming that that is the operational effective operational date, because it all is pinned on that. If there's a, a uh, you know, a, an extension of time, then nothing happens, actually. Um, so I, I would back you up on dates. Yeah. Because there will need to be a vote of the voters on that, whether you can borrow. Yeah. And you need to have the board in place at least 30 days. And I'm, I'm really cutting it close, probably 35 to 40 days right. to get a warning out to have voters come out to vote to give you authorization <coughs> to go borrow. Right. And I'm just talking about... So you can't, if you don't have a board... In July one, it's too late. It's no, I agree. I'm not. I'm not. It's, it's, I, I think it's, I hopefully said budget in place. Oh, if okay. not, yeah, I heard you say board. That's okay, then it, then yeah. it's my mistake because yeah. I think you're right. You you have to have the authority that can borrow the entity that is able to borrow in place um, before July one. Well, you have to have the authority, which only the voters can grant to so the board. Yes, to the board. Yes, right. but, if, but if the voters don't grant that authority, it doesn't matter if there's a board or not because no one will be able to at least. True. Well, actually, no, I don't think that's true. Um, I think that if the, there was not a budget in place, um, well, so let me ask you, if the, does the, so would, with the board vote, 
but you also have to have an article that says, and we authorize this board to borrow against future revenues if you, to, you to address your year. point. You have what? that every year. Okay, so there yeah. would have to be that article as part yeah. of, mm -hmm. but that would be part of the board budget, vote. Part of the budget vote. Well, not not the budget vote, the board vote because if the budget no, vote. No, no, you can't do it. You, the board the board is the only one that can authorize that vote. You have to have the bud, the board in place first. Okay. That's part of the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <coughs> so, so the, do you want to make a motion to ask another question, or um, do I think, we want to? We could do that at the SU board meeting. This is the SU SU board meeting. Well, actually, what's the transition? What's the organizational? It's April April ninth. Eighth is a eighth is the organizational meeting. Okay. So, um, I, I think we need it well before then. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and I, I, I would okay. say direct the, make a motion to direct the superintendent to seek legal counsel on what are the implications of not having a board and budget, approved budget in place by July 1st. I'm thinking mainly fiscal, but there might be other implications. Uh, so motion, you'll, you'll second. second it. So can you, Lisa, read that back? Uh, to direct the superintendent to seek legal counsel on what are the implications of not having a board and approved budget in place by July 1st. Fair. It is, but you don't, I mean, just so long as they understand is that, you know, tying them together like that is, it's a, it's a multi-part question. Okay, so yeah. each one's standing alone. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. And so put and or, I would say and or budget in place. Okay, I'll accept that. Yeah, and just a friendly amendment. Yeah. And or approved budget. Okay. Is there any discussion on this motion? Further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Is there any other Act 46 discussion? Yes, we did say we'd do that under 2.3. It'll be two minutes. Oh, what, okay, yeah. go for it. Just if, if we can all agree that we can bring it up in the full board, but it'd be better to do it sooner if we could all agree that we would provide daycare. Oh, daycare? Yeah. For our community, so we can direct the superintendent so that we can make sure that more families come to that meeting and we can work on the details. So do you need a motion for that bill? Or? Yes, Okay, so I make a motion that we find the means to provide daycare, whether it's volunteer or for the organizational meetings, so we can have more families attend. A second. Do we want to say that we're going to deploy the means, not find them? I mean, we can find them. Okay, okay so, so that's what we can just say. Just direct, 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 direct to, 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 to direct the superintendent to, to have arrange for daycare at the organizational, uh, organizational meeting. meeting on April 8th. Yes. Is that good? Yeah, that works. Okay. Who's seconded? Chris. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Uh, uh, opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Any other Act 46 discussion? Mm -hmm. Same with the organization meeting. It doesn't even, it even make sense to have uh, legal counsel at that meeting or not? I think let's. I guess I'm just going to suggest that we bring that up at the next meeting. Okay. I can yeah, I can make a note good. to make sure that we do that. That was good. Thanks. Okay. The 2.4 is the SU uh, meeting agenda. There's a kind of a little draft in front of you. Um, are there any comments or suggestions for changes to this? Discussion agenda. So we have the board reorganization is complete on their reviewing board norms, uh, <coughs> considering the calendar that we're recommending out tonight. Act 46 update, which will include a couple different things. 3.1, that date is after the date we meet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's probably point. left over, yeah. So maybe January 28th? We'll, we'll check the date. Okay. We'll check Thanks. the date. Thanks. Thanks. 
Uh, I wanted to suggest that we add, uh, I wanted to ask the executive committee. Um, I happened to attend uh, a couple weeks ago a presentation by students on the recently released data for the youth risk behavior assessment that's done statewide every couple of years, I think. And uh, I just happened to be there because my son was part of the team that was presenting it. Um, I found it really interesting and compelling. There's some just interesting data in there about um, challenges that students themselves are saying that they're facing. Um, and I thought it would be great to invite students to you know, kind of share their experiences and this data analysis they're working on and you know, um, share how they perceive these concerns. Um, so I, I'm thinking 10 or 15 minutes, but I, sure. unless anybody objects, Plan to do that. Okay. We we'll figure out where to put it. Maybe they should come is there any earlier in the agenda yeah. so that we might. Is there any written materials that they present? They, yeah, they have a printout of the data and they've got some slides that they put together. They all, the, the people who participated voted on um, what they thought their top three concerns were, both in the middle school and the high school. And so, yeah, it's a good, okay. it's a good thing. Uh, uh, go ahead. Um, uh, I just want to be sure that there's an actual space for them because sometimes we invite these people and we're very proud of them, but we say, well, you can put this on for the 15 minutes before we start, and nobody's there. There's people going back and forth. They've done a good job. Let's honor that with their time mm -hmm. in front of our board. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. good one. So maybe we'll put it in with reports to the board. Yeah, I don't know if it's 4.1. I would suggest 4.1. 4.1, it's like the first discussion, yeah. first discussion yeah. that first thing we take up. Norms. Yeah. Um, maybe before the norms, just, just, just in deference to their taking the time to be there. Okay. I have this note from, I think it's from the BSBA, Lori probably know about this, that says, please be sure to add appointment of your SEU's voting delegate for the statewide health insurance to the first meeting of your SEU board? Because we'll get one vote whether to ratify the agreement. Yeah. Maybe we can do it later, but yeah, we can do it now soon. And then it also came up that uh, do we need to have a discussion item on teacher contracts because the proposal has been made to it's been made so I was hoping that we could have a 4.4 that we would talk to everyone and I'm trying to gather if we're going to have everybody enough attendance in each board to be able to ratify the teacher contract I'm just trying to get that done they're voting this at the end of this week so okay. so, so we can some boards like Ron and Chris can do it on the first I just want to really make sure we have it all done so we can print, print on the contracts on April 10th and get them out to teachers after all the So basically, uh, there's three items we're adding to the discussion agenda. One is the student presentation. One is, um, this is actually an action item, but it'll be appointing a representative to, is it VHI? And, yeah. The we can do that as part of the DSBA. We already had a report from the DSBA. And then as an item on. And then an action. Do you want that under reorganization or that under action? And Matthew, you and I can. Yeah, we can. We'll, we'll figure out where to put okay. it. Okay. It's really. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Next week? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we need to go into executive session. So is there a motion? <laughs> I just did. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's a good point. right here next to yeah. uh, Thank you. Oh, I Dorothy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. We can do the financial next time if the board's fine with that. Or we can do it at the SU meeting. Also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can do it there. Sorry, Lori. No, no, no. It's valuable to have. Do you want to take care of this retirement while we're yeah. sort of yeah, be good. Well, yes, why don't you do that while you're here? So, so I, I will move that we uh, accept with appreciation the retirement of uh, Joanne Minkoff, effective. The end of the school year. Back to the end of the school year. So I'll bring the amendment to move um, 
and accept the retirement and appreciate Joanne Mankoff's multiple services and participation as opposed to appreciating her retirement. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah. yes. I know, but the way it would read. Put it up that right. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, is there a second for that? A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then, does somebody want to move the. I move that we go into executive session? Move the board orders first. Oh, the yeah. board orders. So I will move that we approve um, expenditures of $263,709.23 Check for the month of February. What, two cents or 23? 23. 23? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the orders, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's exactly move that we go into executive session for personnel. For the purposes of discussing the personnel issue. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 